Hi everyone, hope you're all enjoying News Group Live here in York. Um, so we're here today to talk about the Honeycomb and the Navigator. So just as a bit of an introduction first, my name's Carl McPhee. I work as a business partner within the customer success organisation of Anaplan. I've been with Anaplan for around two years now and spent around 15 years across the software industry doing a variety of implementations. Um, my major focus at the minute is around the larger clients in the automotive sector and um, consumer goods. Hi, I'm Alistair Walls, also a business partner in the customer success organisation. I've been at Anaplan now for around 20 months and work uh, with, again, with some of our larger customers, particularly focused on uh, consumer goods and uh, the telecoms industry as well. Okay, so we're here today to talk about two things really, the honeycomb, which is probably something you've been hearing a lot about, but also the Anaplan Navigator as well. So to really understand the honeycomb, it's probably worth just taking a, a step back first um, and talking about use cases within Anaplan. So one of the very unique things about Anaplan is, as well as it being extremely powerful, it's also very, very flexible. And what this means is we see Anaplan deployed across so many different use cases, so many different planning processes across all areas of the organisation. This includes finance, sales, supply chain, and you can see some of the, the vast different arrays of use cases that we, that we uh, deploy Anaplan on. Now, what this means is customers use Anaplan, uh, Anaplan in a variety of different ways. And you may start off on just a single use case in one area, but then quite quickly start to grow and use Anaplan across different processes across the organisation. Now, where, the, where this really starts to become very valuable is when you start to connect these use cases <coughs> together. So moving on from those use cases, let's talk a little bit about connected planning. This is very much our mantra in Anaplan. This is where we see customers start to amplify that value of Anaplan. So not just the, the single isolated planning use case, but actually looking at the whole planning process across the organisation, looking at the different, part, the different areas of that planning and modelling it in Anaplan, but then also connecting those together. And when, when we talk about connecting them together, we're, we're talking about three different things, really. Connecting them together from a data perspective. This, this is crucial, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. The, um, the data within the organisation. You know, we, we're really keen that the whole organisation is planning on a consistent set of data, a common source of the truth. Um, so connecting these use cases from a data perspective, using techniques such as Anaplan Data Hubs, which you've probably seen and heard about, um, to enable that. But also connecting the people across those areas as well. We really recognise that planning can't take place in silos across the organisation. It's all part of a much larger planning process, so the people who are involved in those processes need to be connected together. So if you can achieve this, this almost holy grail of planning um, and connect all of this, these different plans together, you can end up with a single solution run out of a single platform and a plan, which takes all of the planning processes across the business and runs them almost as a single unit, really. Um, the kind of the time you can react then comes down to a very, very short um, amount of time and you can start to get that holistic view of planning across the whole organisation. So the title of this is What is the Honeycomb? And I've not even mentioned Honeycomb at this point really. So that's kind of setting the scene of what we mean by use cases and connected planning. And that's where we can start to bring in this idea of the honeycomb. So, yeah, what is the honeycomb? So it's, it's a simplified way of mapping your organisation from a planning perspective, looking at the different processes that exist and mapping those into, into use cases connected together. This is the honeycomb that we start to evolve within organisations. So in this example here, we can think of this as a, as a typical Anaplan customer quite early in their journey, and they've embarked on um, implementing a revenue planning use case. So they're now using Anaplan to drive that planning process within their business. So you can start to look at that and think, well, okay, what, 
planning processes sit next to that um, and are possibly connected with that as well. So they may look at this and sort of immediately realise that as well as <coughs> revenue planning, there's also connected use cases such as expense planning as well. So you could potentially expand the use of Anaplan within your organisation to start running expense planning there as well. Then with those two pieces in place, you can then naturally start to see that, OK, we've now got a fuller view of the financial plan within the organisation. So maybe a separate model which brings that information together and presents that consolidated picture of the financial plan. And again, this kind of goes on, really, just following these planning processes through the business, you then start getting into areas such as cost allocation. You know, asking those questions to people, <coughs> what do people use these numbers for? You start to get the answers of where other planning processes exist. So cost allocation, people take the financial plan and they have to allocate those costs. And then that enables the next use case, something like product profitability analysis. So you can see how this kind of honeycomb starts to evolve with connected use cases developing. And as you continue down this line of thinking, you, you can build out um, an overall honeycomb with, as I say, the goal of it to be looking across the entire organisation, every planning process that exists, where they talk to each other and how that could um, form a vision of how you want to run your planning process going forward. So, so sorry, so Alistair, yeah, uh, just a quick question. Is there a right place to start with? The honeycomb connected planning? Okay, or? yeah, that is a, a good one, really, because um, the, the answer is no, really. The, okay. You can start from any point on this honeycomb, and we certainly see this in practice. Every customer is different. Every customer has started on their Anaplan journey on a particular use case. It might be demand planning for one organisation. It might be financial planning for another. But the good thing is there's, there's no right answer to where you absolutely need to start. You, the, the key thing, though, is looking at where you are and building out those connections. So the honeycomb evolves outwards from where you currently are on our plan. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of building those use cases out, is there anything that you must have before you start to look at these? So, yeah, the, uh, a good understanding of process. That, okay. would, that would probably be our um, key ask on this, really. For you to really understand what your honeycomb looks like, um, you need to understand those processes across the business and, and the w sort of there's different techniques in order to get there but the common question is where do these numbers go once we've produced those numbers, who uses them and what do they use them for? That's very much a way of tracing it through the organisation. So, so that is the honeycomb and then another reason why this is so important as well is you can, once you've built that honeycomb out, you can use that to start generating your roadmap. So this is where, rather than just looking at the use cases and how they connect together, you can start to evaluate them and make decisions about, okay, how do we want to move forward? How do we build out this roadmap to get us from where we are today, which might be a single use case, or it might be a few um, use cases not necessarily connected together. How can we take that and build out a roadmap for the rest of this year and beyond to really build out this connected planning vision in our plan? Sounds great. Okay, so that hopefully that makes sense. That's the, the honeycomb in a nutshell. Um, the, probably the, the key question is, though, okay, well, how, how do we create one of these honeycombs? Yeah, so I'm here now to talk very briefly about how you and your company can create your own honeycomb. We've already covered what the honeycomb is and why it's important. And hopefully by the end of this, you should understand who needs to be involved who, and who from Anaplan can help and support you with this journey. What you need to do to facilitate the session and what outputs you can expect to get. What you've got to remember with this is this is our framework that we are working on. Please feel free to adapt this, change it in any way that you need and please feel free to reach out to your business partner for further help with it. And additionally, how you can use the Honeycomb to uh, deliver further conversation topics and future discussion about the Anaplan roadmap as well. Before we actually start with looking at the workshops, 
What we wanted to do was just discuss briefly with you the actual objectives of uh, the session that we're going in, that we're looking to cover. What we've got to remember is that all of these workshops are highly collaborative. When we are looking at connecting business processes and business plans, so none of this can be done in isolation. Ideally, you'd have uh, people from multiple different business functions, but as a minimum, it would need to be people from different work streams within an individual function. And probably like, when you're running one of these workshops, um, these people that you need to get in there, do they need to be Anaplan experts? No, um, absolutely not. Um, okay. You know, we, th these workshops can be done before an initial use case goes live and Anaplan can uh, support with d discussing what is feasible or alternatively if you've had successful go lives it does help to have somebody in there with, a small, with some Anaplan knowledge but it isn't necessary that every single person should have that. Yeah, so the key thing is is getting the people in that workshop who understand the processes, isn't it? And understanding how planning takes place across the whole organisation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And this takes us to the first point of the objectives, which is the alignment on the executive vision for connected planning. So what we're saying really is that the people that should be brought into this are people at a senior, le senior level who understand the business strategy and tactics that they're going through. They're so these are people like the executives of individual business functions, uh, potentially people, uh, process owners and subject matter experts who understand s sort of those tactical and operational layers as well in order to b build up the different processes around it. The Anaplan knowledge starts to come in here in the second area, which is understanding how we can actually use Anaplan to, le or to leverage Anaplan to achieve the vision. You know what's appropriate to do within Anaplan, and this is where the system-specific knowledge starts to become useful as well. The final point that, and objective that we're looking to get to is an agreement on the action plan to make that vision achievable. In terms of the Honeycomb workshop itself, we are looking to get alignment in all of the enterprise objectives to deliver your own customised roadmap for each for each uh, customer. So there are five exercises that we go through when we're doing this, looking to understand the vision of what your perfect planning process looks like, understand the opportunities that you have within your organisation. Different organisations have different uh, opportunities, so financial organisations vary highly from uh, very highly from um, supply chain driven organisations. The next and this part can be a good point to try and ask that question of what doesn't work today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, kind of identify the pain points that you've got within your current planning processes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the third and fourth steps really sort of combine together to help us uh, guide what the priorities are and your confidence in being able to deliver those solutions. And the final step is at the actual development of the roadmap itself based upon uh, all of those various different inputs. So looking at the vision uh, aspect of the workshop, you know, this is the f only time that you would be asked to do anything in this by yourself. What we're looking to do is go through and identify three or four different words that help you to describe the ideal future state of your organisation. If we link this back to the Anaplan way, for example, think of this as your project manifesto that whilst we're going through the workshop, you should be, uh, that you should be gearing everything else to. So in this example, we had a customer identify four key aspects that they wanted. They wanted their planning process to be flexible. They needed to be able to make changes, uh, to, to adapt to different business processes over, the ti over time. It needed to be efficient by providing data in a timely manner and, it, and timely and accurate data to help make business decisions. The processes all needed to be integrated. So what we're talking about here is what Carl uh, referenced earlier in terms of a data hub. Having one source of truth across the entire organisation that everybody can reference back to. Yeah, it, it kind of sets the scene quite nicely, yeah, doesn't it? In terms of these vision statements, if you can agree these at the high level, 
as you go through the rest of this journey on building out your honeycomb, you can keep cross-referencing back to this and checking use cases to whether they would meet these, these overall vision objectives. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And finally, it needs to be user-friendly. So we need to provide a seamless experience that all of the end users can, can get involved with and can add value to them, you know, reduce time, improve accuracy and help deliver on their job requirements. So once that vision's been done and uh, we, we've identified the key aspects, we move on to the second exercise, which is working in small groups, looking to identify a number of different use cases that matter to you as an organisation. So in this example, we have seen uh, examples coming from four or five different functional areas from supply chain, finance, operations, etc., and a number of different uh, and a number of different use cases within each of those. So again, this is all about discussion, driving discussion within the organisation to identify what those key areas are, and again, identifying the key people that you need and key stakeholders that you would need to engage with to actually implement this by understanding the f those different functional areas. And, and this is where you can ask those questions of, you know, wh whatever your current use case is, asking those questions of where do these numbers go once we produce them, that very much, the answer to that question really starts to trace the planning process through your organisation and it helps you to kind of identify these different planning use cases which then take place to help build out this, this view of what opportunities do you have as a business. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> and once we've actually created these different use cases, refined them down, because the list often ends up significantly longer than this, we get to that initial starting point of the honeycomb. So within this, you can see a whole ecosystem of different use cases that connect together, which, whilst valuable, which is extremely valuable and gives us a target of what we can go after to use and a plan for. However, there are a, number, a couple of other steps that we need to go through to really start to add value at this stage, primarily around the prioritisation of, uh, of these different use cases. So what we see here is these two exercises of understanding the expected benefit and understanding the level of effort required to actually improve uh, those or improve and implement those planning processes. So this is done quite simply. So it's a simple either red, amber, green rating to understand the expected benefit initially, or you could do it on a rating scale of one to 10 to really sort of delve down into that. Once that initial uh, exercise has been done to identify the benefit, we can then look at the le doing the same exercise on the level of effort required to actually implement those solutions. Once, once we've got those two different uh, ratings, it allows us to put the uh, different use cases into different quadrants within, uh, oh, into various different quadrants. So what we can see here is that we've got quick wins, high impact but high effort, minor and simple improvements, and a number which are low priority, things that may drop off the roadmap over time, or uh, would be put right to the end. And, and this is really important, isn't it? Yeah, because absolutely. You, when you go through this exercise, what you'll find is you identify so many use cases, you know, planning across every organisation is complicated. It involves a lot of different areas. So you, you will identify a lot of different use cases. So this is very much a technique then of trying to work out where best to spend your time, isn't yeah. it? And, and when, you, when we're talking about kind of assessing that level of effort, what kind, of, um, what kind of things would distinguish the level of effort? Yeah, absolutely. So things that tend to distinguish that level of effort that are required are things like um, how many users will be working in it? Mm. Are there significant process changes required? You know, how many business functions does this cross? Is it within a single function, therefore providing an output to somewhere else? Or actually, is it something like SNOP that covers four or five different business functions? the higher the number of those functions, the more complex they tend to be. You yeah. also have to consider things like how you're going to deploy this. Is this being deployed in 
for one region or one market, or is it going to be deployed globally to multiple countries, all with different, uh, slightly different requirements in terms of those processes? So these are some, you know, these are considerations that need to be made with uh, when when going through these exercises. Yeah, and I think a key point there is in terms of that understanding of the processes. Correct. Um, if this is already a well-defined process within your organisation that means you, you've got a better chance of understanding it and a better chance of implementing it within Anaplan. If it's a completely new process, you know, there needs to be some thinking there first and it all feeds into this assessment of the level of effort for each use case, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The final step in this as well, and what you can see here with the different color, colors within this, is how use cases are sort of clustered together to uh, identify the dependencies upon each other. So this is making sure that when we're looking at a particular problem, we are going through all of those individual steps to allow you to actually build everything out. And what you see at the end of this is, as Carl mentioned earlier, something like this roadmap. So in this particular organization, what we can see is that they started off with their p and planning and their SNOP target setting. But where they started to see value uh, with additional use cases was were around things like demand planning and sales plan planning. You know, directly linked the sales planning, obviously pulling in uh, a demand signal right from the end customer. The demand planning, looking at where that's going to impact all of their individual uh, manufacturing sites and understanding that. From there, they can go and drive through things like production planning and inventory planning down the supply chain side, or in terms of the more operational uh, side of things, looking at uh, daily capacity, uh, most economical sources of supply, leading into plant uh, cost forecasting, etc. Yeah, and both of those are down sort of the supply chain and operational uh, operational side. Within the finance uh, area, there were further identifications in terms of what commercial activity are you planning in terms of uh, you know uh, trade promotions, etc. To to allow you to understand really the cost of sales. So yeah, I mean, this really gives you that view then, doesn't it, of um, the roadmap, you know, when, as I say, you'll identify a lot of different use cases and the question then is, it almost feels like too much, where do we prioritise and where do we spend our time? By going through this kind of exercise and assessing each use case as per that matrix which Alistair was showing, you can start to build out this roadmap and you know where to go next then. You can do it in a, in a controlled way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's all about identifying where the value lies within the organisation. Yeah. Is it going after the quick wins to free up capital or is it about targeting a couple of really high value but difficult to implement things yeah. that are probably more strategic in vision but take longer to actually deliver? Yeah. And it really comes down to your organization's priorities. And what we're trying to do is give a number of different options to people as to how they need to deliver those or could that's deliver it. those. The, the answer here will be specific to every organization, really. Yeah, we'll exactly. follow this approach of um, a connected planning honeycomb and a roadmap associated with that. But it will be different for, for every organization. Yeah. So, Okay, so that lays out kind of, they're, they're the kind of techniques that we've been using in Anaplan Customer Success to help customers run these kind of workshops and work out their honeycomb. Um, obviously, you know, you can do this yourselves as an organisation, um, but the question then is, okay, what other resources are available to you to help you on this journey? And that brings us into the Anaplan Navigator. So this is something that we've set up in Anaplan. Um, it's a website, you can, you can go to this now, have a look around, it's navigator.anaplan.com. And effectively what this is, is it's an interactive knowledge hub specifically aimed at giving you the, the knowledge and the resources you need to start building out your honeycombs. So the way we've laid this out is we've um, divided it between the three key functional areas that we see finance, supply chain and sales um, and if you click into any of those areas what you will see is example honeycombs. So these are the most common honeycombs that we're seeing from organisations. It, yeah. it gives you inspiration and ideas of what use cases other customers are using it for. Um, so you can use this very much as a, as a sort of a, in, a source of inspiration really. Yeah. 
Yeah. One of the other uh, real benefits of this is it can be used uh, to help engage your senior stakeholders as yes. well. So yeah. rather than them having to go and invest their time in something that they no, don't know a huge amount about, what you can do is use it to provide examples to them as well of what is possible with Anaplan to start getting them thinking, to start helping them to see what the potential value is in, uh, in going down the route of creating your own honeycomb at the end yeah. of the day. And you know, by using those pre-built uh, honeycombs, it, it's much faster to, to get that engagement. Yeah, so definitely check out the yeah. Navigator. Um, there's, there's videos and white paper resources on there as well. Absolutely. Certainly encourage everybody to take a look at that. Um, okay, so just a, a quick wrap up, conscious of time. Really, request from us, calls, call to action. Um, start thinking about your honeycomb, wherever you are on that journey of Anaplan. Start thinking about it and how you would start to build that out. As I say, check out the Anaplan Navigator, great resource to help with this. And if you need any further inspiration, reach out to business partners like myself and Alistair. We can help guide customers on this, on this journey. I think we've got some questions coming through on the chat though. So, okay, thanks a lot. Hi everyone, yeah, so we're just uh, looking at the questions coming through and um, yeah, there's a great question here about are these templates available for the honeycomb slides, they look great. Um, they do look great actually, they've got an amazing transition on them which we're exceptionally proud of. Um, but yeah, we can, we can make these templates available but what you'll also find again, as I mentioned before, on the navigator, that's our single resource for um, you know, templates around um, creating your honeycomb. So if you go on there, not only will you find the videos and the white paper resources, um, but you'll also see examples of honeycombs as well. Um, but we'll, we'll certainly look into how we can start making this collateral more available, maybe start publishing it on community actually as well, because it would be good to get this out in the hands of all the customers really, because yeah, we, we very much want you to start building out your own honeycomb, so this could help. Okay. Okay, so not seeing any other questions at the minute. So yeah, thanks everyone. Hope you've really enjoyed User Group Live. Um, hope that's been um, useful from a honeycomb perspective. You know, we, hopefully you know what a honeycomb is now. And um, yeah, let's keep continuing to build these out. Thanks a lot. I was going to say, Carl and I will also be available online afterwards uh, answering some questions yes. in the forum. So if there's anything else that people would like to know about, please feel free to let us know and we'll uh, do our best to answer them at that point as well. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.